Now, the next state variable we're going to look into is the wet temperature. So what is that? Well, you can actually feel it when you take a shower. I don't know if you have noticed, but in Sweden, which has different seasons, uh, if you take a shower indoors during the winter, even though you have the same temperature in your bathroom uh, in the winter as in the summer, you typically freeze more when you take a shower in the winter. If you have the same temperature of the water and leave your bathroom door open. Now, why is that? Well, it's partly because of the thing that you can experience if you take a shower and then you run out uh, outside or you, for example, take a sauna and you you have wet uh, skin and then you go outside and then you freeze more. But it's a bit more complicated than that. So let's uh, go through this. And to do this, we need to do a few things. We need to solve an energy balance and we need to solve a mass balance. And to do that, we need to know what a mass transfer coefficient is and what a heat transfer coefficient is. But even before we start doing that, let's test yourself again. Uh, think about mass balances and energy balances. What kind of units can you use in these? Let's say, for example, you take in one cubic meter from outside into this room. How can you make a mass balance of that? Take a few minutes and write down the units you think you can use. As you might have guessed, there is a reason why I ask these questions. And the reason is that I want to work less. I don't want to re-examine my students over and over and over again. And the thing is that if you get this wrong, and don't understand it, you got it wrong and relearn, then you are unfortunately likely to fail my exams over and over and over and over and over again. So please pay attention. So I'm sorry to say that if you thought that you could do mass balances in cubic meters, you're dead wrong. You can't do that. And the reason is really simple if you start thinking about it. Let's say, for example, you have a balloon and then you blow it up and you get a certain volume. Now, if you take that balloon from the room you're in and then you transfer it to a very, very cold room, then the balloon will shrink. Or if you transfer it to a place where the pressure is low, then the balloon will be larger. So cubic meters you can't trust. Never, 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 never use cubic meters in a mass balance. So what can you use? You can use kilograms or kilograms per second. Now, if you're clever, you can use moles. Uh, because if you take the mass balances in kilogram and then you can divide with the molar mass and then you turn it into mole instead. And if you're really clever, you can also do mass balances in mole and thinking of directions and things like that. But in my part, of course, think about kilograms and kilograms per second. Uh, or mole if it's the same thing, if it's the same molar mass all the time. What about energy balance? Well, some students tend to think that you can make energy balance in Celsius or Kelvin. But if you, for example, have a cup of coffee and then you put an ice cube in there, it takes energy to melt the ice. So, and as long as the ice is melting, the water doesn't change temperature. So energy, well, you can't use an <laughs> Celsius, you can't use Kelvin, you must use an energy unit that joule or joule per second, joule per second being watts. Okay, so you know what units you use in mass balances and energy balances. So what does that have to do with wet temperature? Well, consider the following situation. You spill water on a surface. That water will eventually evaporate and to evaporate water takes energy. So where do you take the energy from? Well, initially you can take it from the water itself. That will result in the water becoming colder and eventually becoming colder than the surrounding air. So you have water being transported from this puddle here to the surrounding air and you will have energy being transported from the air to the water. And when those two match up, when the energy being transported from the air to the puddle uh, is the same as the energy needed to evaporate the water at the 
current evaporation rate, then the water will no longer be cooled down. It will reach a steady state temperature and that steady state temperature is the wet temperature. So how do you describe this heat transfer and the mass transfer? Well, uh, for the heat transfer, you have a temperature difference and you simply take as the simplest possible equation that you take the temperature difference and you multiply that with um, a heat transfer coefficient and then you get the heat transfer. The mass transfer, you can use the same thing. You can use a mass transfer coefficient very close to the water surface. You can say that you have the, the saturation pressure, the vapor pressure. Uh, and far away you have something else. So you have a difference in water content between the two. Then you can take the difference in water content and multiply that with a mass transfer coefficient and then you get the amount of water leaving. And how much energy do you need then? Well, it's simply to take that and multiply it with the evaporation enthalpy. And when those two heat transfers uh, match up, then you have the, the wet temperature. And it's this equation down here. Now, the tricky thing with this equation is that the evaporation enthalpy actually varies with temperature. And you have those two uh, coefficients there, the mass transfer coefficient and the heat transfer coefficient. And how do you know them? Well, there are ways to know them. There is, there is uh, an equation called the Lewis equation, and you can figure that out. But actually, in your Molière diagram, this has been done for you. So these lines here, the green ones here, are the wet temperature lines, and those are slanted. And note that the wet temperature lines have a different slope than the enthalpy lines. So this green line here is different than the blue. So how is this related to freezing more when you shower in the winter than the summer? Well, it's related to this curve here. Indoor air in Sweden is essentially just outer air heated up. And if you just heat up air, the water content doesn't change. It can't disappear anywhere. So you get go straight up here. And with that, you reduce the relative humidity. And the result is that you have a lower wet temperature during the winter indoors than you have during the summer. This is also why wooden instruments don't like the Swedish winter, because not only does wooden instruments not like uh, low temperature and temperature changes, especially much, but they don't like changes in humidity because then the wood changes shape. And that's the reason why many pianos and things like that have actually a climate control thing nowadays in them. So you have to water them. And I can actually m measure that myself at my home that the air is drying during the winter because I need to water my piano more often in the winter than I do during the summer.